Hello, students. Welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel, where we've got tons of example videos and lecture videos for statics. Uh, make sure that you hit the bell sign so that you can get the latest, newest videos as they arrive. Uh, also, check out the course website. If you go to the caption for this video, you'll find a link to the course website that has all of the lecture notes, all of the example uh, notes, so that you can follow along with me as we go through this video. So today we're gonna do an example for friction. This is example 8.2 coming from Hibbler's statics book. Let's read the problem statement. A vending machine is on a truck bed. At an angle for 25 degrees, the vending machine will begin to slide. Determine the static friction coefficient for this state to be true. So the vending machine wants to slide. What is its status friction coefficient? If we look at the diagram we're given, it's a idealized vending machine. We're given some dimensional information. We're given the center of mass of this uh, vending machine. We're also given the truck bed, that it's at an angle of 25 degrees. And that's pretty much what we've got. Let's take this free by a dot free. Let's take this uh, schematic and replace it with a free body diagram, where we replace the supporting floor with the appropriate reactions. So we go over here and we do that. We draw the vending machine again. We draw the dimensions. We figure out that there's an angle of 25 degrees on that the on a uh, 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 relative to the weight of our body, and we replace the floor with the reactions, where we have a normal force that keeps the vending machine up, we have a frictional force, F, that resists the sliding motion, <clears throat> and there exists some distance, X, from the center of our, the, the centroid of our uh, vending machine, some distance, right? that describes where those two forces uh, act, where on average do they act, right? So we've got three unknowns in this diagram. Let's now go and list out our knowns and unknowns. In this problem, we're going to assume that the weight of the vending machine is known. We're gonna need to find the frictional force, the normal force, the distance x, and of course, the, the thing that we're interested in, the static friction coefficient. Because in this problem, we're told the vending machine will begin to slide. This is that instance where it is just about to slide. That instance is called impending motion. And it gives us an equation where the force that's exerted in the body is equal to the static frictional force calculated as the static friction coefficient times the normal force, right? So this is like a extra equation of equilibrium that we can use. So now that we know that, let's craft equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram. To make it a little easier for us, we're gonna use a rotated coordinate system where we have an X prime, which is positive pointed downwards. We have a Y prime, which is positive, pointed upwards. Let's start with the sum of the forces in the x prime direction. Let's remember that we're, here we're assuming that things that are going down the ramp are positive. So if we were to break that weight down and get this, this x prime component, that would be a positive component. We do so, we find the first term, the weight times the sine of 25 degrees. And then there's something that's gonna resist this uh, uh, weight in the x prime direction, and that is our frictional force, F. So let's go ahead and put that right in our equation, minus F equal to zero. Okay, now let's do the sum of the forces in the y prime direction, and we're gonna assume that slanted upwards 
is positive. If we go to our diagram, we see our normal force is pointed upwards, so we'll do an N, right? And then we also will see that there's a component of the weight that's pointed in the downwards direction. That is the weight uh, is, is W cosine of 25 degrees. So we'll put those two together. We get N minus W times cosine 25 degrees. We set that equal to zero. That's our second equation. And now we need one more equilibrium equation. We're gonna do the sum of the moments. We will choose where we sum the moments. We decide to choose a point where most of the unknowns cancel out. We choose point O. At point O, the frictional force and the normal force will not generate a moment. So the only unknown that we will have in that equation is X. And that X is going to be a, a moment arm distance, right? Now, when we want to sum moments, we're looking at forces at some perpendicular distance to a point, right? Well, the weight we have here, W, can be broken down into, into two perpendicular forces. And each of those forces has a distance. This one here has a distance X. That is the uh, perpendicular distance of, the, of this force here, right? And this other one here, uh, this, this force here, it also has a, uh, a distance, and that, that distance is actually measured from, from here, right? So it is uh, 2.5 feet, okay? So now we've got these two forces uh, kind of broken down. We know their moment arms. We can figure out their sense of rotation. Putting all that together, we get our moment equation, where we have negative... W times sine of 25 degrees times 22.5 feet, right? Plus W times cosine of 25 degrees times our X term, our X unknown. So now we've got our three equations of equilibrium, and then we can add that extra equation for impending motion, that the force F is equal to mu S times N. We look at these equations, we see that we have four equations and four unknowns. So we're in a state where we can solve this problem. We can work through these equations and solve for the unknowns. Let's do that. Step one, let's take equation four and let's plug it into equation one. So we'll replace this force in equation one with this equation, right? We do that, and we end up with the following equation. W times sine of 25 degrees minus mu s times n is equal to zero. Next, let's solve equation two for n, and then plug that in into the above equation. So we'll take this equation two here and see that n is equal to W times cosine of 25 degrees. And then we will plug that in to this equation to get it in this form, where W times sine of 25 degrees minus mu s times W times cosine of 25 degrees is equal to zero, right? So now, if we look at this equation, there is only one unknown in this equation, and that is the mu s that we want to define. So we rearrange the equation we find that the W's cancel out and mu S is equal to tan of 25 degrees or 0.466. So there we go. This problem was a little tricky. We were asked to find the coefficient of static friction for an impending motion case. And all we did was work through our procedure, create a free body diagram, identify our knowns and unknowns, found that impending motion equation, applied the equations of equilibrium, and solved for the unknowns. So this is a fairly straightforward example. Feel free to pause the video because I know I go pretty quick. Um, and I look forward to sharing with you the next 
friction example. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. I'm Dr. Stewart. See you next time.